You know what's really interesting? <laughs> when was the last time you seen us? Yo. A lot of people like to ask us, who has better Asian food, New York or LA? Tough question, but we're back in the 626 for a quick trip to try some of the newest spots. Chashu tacos, Sichuan ramen, sugarcane durian drinks, Hong Kong soft swerve, and boba egg tarts. Now the verdict, we'll let you decide. All right, thank you everybody for clicking on that video, but real quick, I gotta tell you about the sponsor, Sinka. They sent me their new percussive massage gun called the Kitta. I've been using it a lot lately, and as you guys know, percussive therapy is like the new thing. It's really good for muscle recovery, especially after playing basketball, and I'm gonna tell you five reasons why I really like this one. Number one, it's super light in weight, and at one and a half pounds, it's easy to carry, easy to maneuver on your own, and you can just put it in your bag and you barely notice it. Number two, it's super quiet because of its brushless motor it's not as loud and you can use it at night and it doesn't bother anybody number three there's six different levels of power so you can really find the one that's perfect for you it can go as soft as massaging the sensitive areas like your hand face and neck or you can go up to level six which is really getting those knots out it can go everywhere from a belly rub to a deep tissue massage number four the battery life is great it's up to several hours of battery life depending on what level you have it on but you are not constantly recharging it and number five it looks really good in this pearl white, it almost looks like a Lexus or like some cool high-tech hair dryer. Again, I really like this and I've been using a lot because I'm not the biggest guy. I don't have the most meat on my arm, so I don't need the most powerful gun going dang and dang and dang and dang and If you guys play a lot of sports, you know how important muscle recovery is. So if you're interested, click on the link down below, the Sinka Kitta. All right, enjoy the rest of this. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a very special episode of Fun Bros Food. We're back in LA. We're with Nelson Chan, who's back in the off season. What's poppin', y'all? Who belongs? Crazy that we're all back in the city. And last but not least. Is this one for oh Productions? Oh my God. Bill Wang from Warfoot, what up, man? What's up, guys? Come on Phil, in, man. I'm not gonna lie, every time we do a video together, it feels like 2017. 2012. 2012. <laughs> 2012. You guys have a new menu. Yeah, we're always trying to switch things up, always trying different things. Bopo Mofo has been very, very busy over the past few months, even through the pandemic. They've been working hard, trying to innovate, bring you new items. Let's check them out. I think, I think first things first, Nell, I need you to make a decision on a drink. That's kind of overwhelming, man. I'm going with the, the hay. Hey, but you like matcha? Okay, that's true. That's me. You need to do the walnut shrimp burger. Hell yeah. Uh, honey walnut, walnut shrimp, shrimp burger. burger. All right. This looks like a very good patty. Hold on. Mmm. Wow. You know, I got a pretty high standard for Hup Doha. Ooh, whoa, whoa. I've had the shrimp burgers in Japan. I've had them in Hong Kong, Korea. This is the best one that I've ever had. All right, now, what do you want to go with, man? I'm gonna go with the tofu toss. This is definitely something different, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> honey whoa. toss. Ooh. It's like a sweet seaweed. On these honey butter furukake tots, the flavor was way more baked in than I thought. I thought it was gonna sit on the exterior, right, right, right. but it was deep in there. Those were super easy to eat, salty, sweet. David, in your hand, you have the spicy chicken sandwich. Yo, I can already taste the napa cabbage. I had a few pieces. Man, I got the regular chicken sandwich. I've been in Macau in China, and the way they do the bowl of bao is a lot different. You yeah, know, we they, got the pork chop version, but you know, with this, they do it super differently. All right, guys, I got the Luro nachos. They actually tweaked these since the last time we had them, added a little bit more kick to them. Chicken sandwiches. It's a 4.75 out of five. Honestly, if it was dark meat, I'd give it a five out of five. Even though it's a chicken breast, that's still a juicy breast. Yo, look at this. Uh, guys, I'm actually excited about the Luro nachos. Let's go in. A little bit more of a Thai kick. I know it's not just you behind yeah. making all this happen, but man, your team, so impressive on how you guys are able to weave authentic Asian flavors together in a non-cringy manner. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. How were you able to do it successfully? Well, a lot of people have good ideas, but execution is, is key. To, oper to operate a restaurant is like so much work, so you gotta have a great team. Eric, my co-founder and the operator, Gene, Ray, and the, and the entire staff, like the reason why I think we're doing well is because we have a culture here. If you're gonna be the type of manager that just like comes in like once a week and just like lets your employees do whatever they want, people will be able to tell in the product. So you gotta, you gotta make sure that you, you put that effort into it. Like Jane Kasha. <laughs> <laughs> Phil has the creative mind, make you weep about your high school relationships. Also served you some Asian American food you never had before. Both executed very well. Kudos to you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we love the food here, but we gotta continue to crawl through the 626 and check out all the new spots. Guys, let me tell you about these tacos right here, guys, because we were talking about how this chef 
grew up in Mexicali. Mexicali is known for having a large Chinese population. So this pastel right here is marinated in five spice and hoisin sauce. That's crazy. So this is not their special pastor. This is just the only pastor that they have here. And then also these peppers, bro, marinated in ponzu sauce. So, you know, the Japanese kinda, ponzu. They look kind of good, but. About to say, this probably tastes like 30% Chinese and the rest like, you know, 60, 70% of it uh, Mexican. And I don't know, it does taste kind of like Tassu for real though. <laughs> Yo. This thing is spicy. The flavoring is good, but damn. It kicked me right in the mouth. Tacos deserve a four out of five. The peppers, it tastes good, but a little too spicy for me. Three out of five, still solid. All right, here I got the flour tortilla of the pastor, the Chinese pastor. Mmm, it definitely accomplishes that chashu vibe. Wow, look at that. It's actually really good. It's actually chashu in a way that I've never had it because I've never had chashu in a taco form. So this guy is the first one to do it. That pastor with the flour tortilla in particular, 4.5 out of five. Nice. Mm. Woo. Ah, ah. Oh my gosh, this is a quesadilla right here. This is crazy. I'm just gonna eat this like a taco though. I'm gonna put some of these onions, pack some of those onions on real quick. Mmm, Mexicali taco over here in San Gabriel. It's like Mexican food that you've never had. Yo, come here if you ever get the chance. On to the next spot. The next spot on our brand new concepts to the 626 crawl is Vitacane. This is a brand new modernized Vietnamese drink concept. Let's do this. All right, you guys, we are here at Vita Cane with one of the owners, Kenny. What up, man? What up, dude? What up? Vita Cane started out in Rosemead. I don't know if you guys have been to that location yet, but we specialize in sugar cane juice. We mix all fresh juices with our sugar cane, and then we also specialize in uh, acai bowls as well. All right, so we got the top five drinks here at Vita Cane, and I would have never imagined drinking some of these flavors. For example, the Stink Bomb one with durian. You going in? Drinking durian. This, I've never drank durian this before. This is dragon fruit and sugar cane, so purple dragon fruit. Oh, that's a lemon berry. This is the dragon fruit. Oh, y'all. No. <laughs> to be the cane. Let's go. Cheers. Sugar cane. It's gotta be the sweetest, lightest thing I've ever had. That is as durian as it gets. That's fresh durian juice blended with sugar Whoa. cane. <laughs> it actually tastes exactly how you would Whoa. think, except it's very good. I personally don't like coconut water or coconut juice, but the sugar cane, it makes it a lot more tasty. I gotta say that this has major potential. All right, you guys, this is the acai bowl here at Vita Cane. Mm. I like the peanut butter though. It tastes like the healthy mm. peanut butter. Right, right, right. Or like the super food joint. Good, I'm man. going on the regular one too. I'm, I'm kind of torn. I, I really like the, the original. I like them both, but I'm going with the original. Now you keep eating the peanut butter <laughs> one. That's you. It's That's different. The, no, it's different. This, this is the Nelly. It's definitely different. You don't eat this often. They are doing things so different here at Vita Cane. Guys, they got a location in Rosemead. They got one here in Alhambra on Main Street. Check out Vita Cane. We're here for Big Softy. Now, what is it called in Cantonese? Sito Sito. Basically means ice cream, little ice cream station. This spot is really cool because it's opened up by the younger generation. We gotta check them out. Hey, yo, Vincent, can you tell us about the concept behind Big Softy? We're ice cream star using Hong Kong old tastes. 80s, 70s, 60s, all around that age. All right, you guys, we are here at Big Softy, and I have a butter mochi with Tahitian vanilla ice cream. This is a yuzu lemonade one. Very light, almost like sorbet. I have the traditional tofu flour. I thought yuzu lemonade is very refreshing and super light, not very icy, melted right away. Wow. You know what's really interesting? <laughs> What was the last time you seen those? Yo. Wow. Yeah, you know what's up. That was like someone's like, lots of ching Really, really good. Get a piece of butter mochi. Yo. We might have a winner, ladies Yo, and gentlemen. This is crazy. But if I had to eat one more, it'd be, it'd be these two for sure. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Our last and final round here at Big Softy, I have a ube tres leches. Bro, creme brulee tofu. This, I have a peach mango calpico soft serve. You want some ASMR? Crunchy? Hey, shout out to Taro. I thought Taro had a good couple of decades. I think Honestly, ube, I think ube's crushing Taro in 2020. 
That one is really interesting. Cause I've never had anything that tasted like that. I'm rolling with the creme brulee tofu. I'm going with the ube. I'm going with the yuzu cow pico. Big softy, Monterey Park, MPK 626. On this fusion second generation crawl, guys, we have to show love to the bobs that just came here a year ago, too. Let's go in. This is a new spot here, T, at the Deerfield Plaza. All right, you guys, we have just put in $5 to the Lucky Lipstick game. I'm pretty sure this game is from China. Oh, no! What? No, no, you hit it. You hit it now. Nah. Yeah, I would, there's a lot of here tees in Macau, China. So it's kind of crazy to see it out here in 626. I'm looking at an Ovaltine boba with uh, crushed cookies on top. That's good. It no cap? No cap. Here I got the super fruit green tea. Yo, they might have to change the name to this, man. They might have to call it super fresh fruit green tea because this thing is refreshing. <laughs> so this is my purchase here at Here Tea. It's a Ludan. I think America could eat more hard boiled eggs, man. This is good, it's juicy inside. This is one of the better Lou Dons I've had in a while. And for a dollar. Mm. All right, so just as we checked out the new items at Ball Pole earlier, we are here at Sun Mary Bakery, one of the best bakeries in the 626. All right, guys, this is all the trend right now. It's like a butter, garlic, oh, bread man. bowl. This is it, Asian style. Cheers. When it's fresh like that. So decadent. How soft it is. Got to get five. Five out of five. Hey, really? right From Nelson. All right, guys. Moving on to the more crazier item, the this, boba egg tart. This is boba pearls on top of an egg tart with a little uh, chocolate roll on the side. This is actually milk tea. Guys, overall, here's the thing. If you like boba, get this. If you're not the biggest boba fan, skip it. Okay, we have two items here that, uh, you know, we're actually more like popular amongst the hipster dessert world for many years, but now they have reached Sun Mary Bakery and they're mass producing them, guys. This is the mochi donut. Mary mochi donuts, the cheapest mochi donuts out there. Not feeling it. Not feeling it. I don't know, there's something about that mango. It tastes extremely artificial. It was all right. I mean, the top Oreo is kind of hard, but I like the texture of the, the actual donut. Yeah, and this is 2.5. They're not going to be better than the spots that specialize in it. Facts. But do get the garlic bread though, hands down. <laughs> Aren't you guys, we are looking at killer noodle right now. Andrew, this is a Japanese, Chinese Sichuan fusion ramen concept from the ramen geniuses world renowned at Sujita. They let you choose your numbness level and your spiciness level because those are two very different things. So for the longest time, Andrew, Japanese have actually had tantan tan men, right. which is a version of tan dan mian. We have the wet style, we got the dry style, soup, no soup. Over here, Andrew, we've got more of a downtown style, which is more vinegar and chili oil. It's really got a tangy aftertaste. Ooh. I would say this is more of their like original invention. And then last but not least, they got their Mabo Tofu concept. Here, I got the dry Tokyo style. You just break that up. Wow. But this, you know, it's based off a Tan Tan Men, which was based off a Dan Dan Mian, but this is its own thing. Honestly, at Sujita, the way I know they how they do things, they're almost like the Momofuku of Japan. Tokyo style. Very, very smoky, very meaty. I mean, you see how dark this meat is right here? That's Ooh. that's where all the smokiness is coming from. What, do you, what can you compare it to? Oh, oh, one, one more bite. It's kind of a mixture between tan tan mian and then like a Mexican spice. It literally- Really? Oh. It's it kind of feels like we're at like a Chinese spot right now, but this is really, really unique in the sense that there's some element of almost like the vinegar that you would put on it. We're brothers, I gotta go in, David. Flip All it, right, flip it. In. This is the only Japanese restaurant that really touts to be uh, as painful and delicious. All right, you guys, last but not least, Andrew, you have a Japanese take on the guabao. Yes, this is a spicy pork bun coming from the uh, Fujinese, Taiwanese side. And of course, we have their uh, version of a mabo tofu ramen. I can see why Killer Noodle says this place is as much pain as it is pleasure. Ooh, this one is really interesting. Oh. Really heavy white pepper flavor. Overall, Andrew, here at Killer Noodle, we have sampled everything on the menu. I'm going with the dry Tokyo style. And there's something about that Mabo tofu, very peppery, 
very light. I guess it's the lightest, you know, version of that dish I've ever had. So I'm gonna roll with that one, but I would say all of them were good. All right, now we're talking about concepts that are coming straight over from China. But right. what, what are we looking at? This type of pot right here, I like this lid where the smoke comes out from right here. Obviously it's locked up right now. They actually put ice, dry ice, in the, around the hot pot, simmer the, the broth or something, and the smoke, and he just comes out right here. I don't know, something just tastes better. All right, we have the uh, two roll kin. Cool. Oh, oh, oh look, wow, it's I, cooking I all types of ways. David, you said one of your favorite hot pots was in the hutongs. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is similar to it. That's why I wanted to come here. That's why I brought us here. A juicy. What sauce is Nelson grabbing? Look at him think. Okay, what's underneath? Oh, hello. Oh, no, I don't want that one. What about that one? This is a whole video on its own. Wow. Uh, I got cilantro, green onion, the sesame sauce, sesame oil, and chili oil. Cilantro, spicy oil, sugar, and some soy sauce. That's it. Got your favorite scallions, Ooh. cilantro, garlic, uh, soy sauce, got some chilies in there, got the sesame oil. Looking very colorful. Yes, sir. Oh. Like your outfits. Haha. -ha. All right, so we're about 30 minutes into the meal. I got my paper bib on, gotta protect, uh, you know, the Mariners jersey. I gotta say that it was overall, it's good. I thought the pot stickers were good. Hey, I'm telling you, if it's a pot where you can easily burn yourself, that's authentic. So when it comes to who has better Asian food, New York or LA, I think the truth is it depends. Each region is probably stronger at certain Asian cuisines. And I even think LA might have more specifically Asian American options, but New York definitely got the cheap eats and the really cool high-end spots. I don't think we're able to find the definitive answer in this video, so we might have to take a few more trips back. You know what? Let us know in the comments below what you think. And until next time, we're out. Peace. All right, you guys, we are standing in front of one of, if not the hottest spot in the 626 right now. Nell, your parents come here. We are talking about the Deerfield Garden Fresh Meat Market. Bro. People are going ham right now. Since we were standing here, like 10 people have already asked us if we're standing in line because they're trying to get meat for their hot pot at home. 